I'm excited for this season of Rocket Motivation because my firm, Hand Arendal Harrison Sale, Attorneys at Law, where I am a partner, is our sponsor. We understand life and running a business can be challenging, but with the right support, it can also be incredibly rewarding. That's why we're thrilled to announce our partnership with Hand Arendal Harrison Sale. I've found it easier to deal with the uncertainty in my own life, what CF would look like and how it would impact my life. The focus was very much on not dwelling on the uncertainty and just being in the present and seizing all those opportunities. For me, the overarching thing is trying to focus on the joy of life. Not in a cheesy, be happy all the time way, but I think in a more holistic way. Even when there's the unknowns and the hard stuff, I still want to be able to find joy in those really hard times. And then, of course, find joy in the easy good times, too. Hey, everyone. This is Rod Kate, and welcome to this week's episode of Rocket Motivation. This week's guest was nine years old when she was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis dramatically shortens life expectancy and increases chances of becoming very ill. This week's guest has not let cystic fibrosis slow her down. She's now 29 years old, a lawyer practicing in Birmingham, Alabama, and just got married. She's going to tell her story of living with cystic fibrosis. Emily Penley, welcome to Rocket Motivation. Thank you. I'm so, so excited to be here. Kick off the new year together. All right. Well, Emily, let's do this. Why don't you... um, you know, I've kind of given an overview, but tell us about your life now, what you do, what's going on in your life, kind of just catch us up. Perfect. Yeah. So like you said, I'm 29. I live in Birmingham, Alabama and practice law. I do civil defense litigation and some appellate work within that, which I, I really enjoy. I love research and writing and I'm pretty nerdy, so it's a lot of fun. And I just got married on New Year's Eve, so a newlywed, which is it's so far so good. Yeah, so that's kind of macro level my, my life right now. Okay, well, that, that's good. All right, well, so let's do this. Let's go back to your diagnosis of, of cystic fibrosis. But first of all, tell us, because everybody doesn't know what cystic fibrosis is. What is cystic fibrosis? Yeah, cystic fibrosis is a genetic chronic illness. Um, Now there's newborn screening in the state of Alabama and across the country, but really the gene of this genetic illness wasn't identified until the late 90s. So testing and treatment has changed so much in the last just 25, 30 years. But what CF does is it causes your body to create a thick, sticky mucus and then that causes all kinds of issues with your pancreas and your enzymes and your blood sugar. But most commonly for CF patients, it causes a lot of infection in your lungs because there's thick, sticky mucus that'll build up in your lungs, not only obstructing your airways, but also causing bacteria that um, other people could just, you know, breathe in and out. It'll cause it to get stuck in your lungs resulting in needing hospitalization or different antibiotics to kind of treat various lung infections. Right. And so I guess that the the decrease in life expectancy or the, um, I guess, more susceptibility to major illnesses, that's because of the infection? Exactly. And just because your body is, because of that thick mucus, more susceptible to anything. I mean, infection, flu, pneumonia, kind of all kinds of upper respiratory issues that go along with that. And then because the thick sticky mucus is also around your pancreas and other organs, it can result in kind of failure to thrive, failure to um, retain and digest nutrients and other issues related to digestion. Well, well, tell us about, you know, when you were first diagnosed. And I know I, I think you, you told me you were nine years old, and so that's that's pretty young. And not, I, you may not even have understood the the magnitude of, of what was going on. But 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 tell us about that. Tell us about when you got first got diagnosed. 
Yes, I was nine, like you mentioned, and I, you know, really, I have two older brothers, and I was fairly healthy, always chasing them around and, you know, able to do activities and go to summer camp, but I I was fairly scrawny, and so, and had an inability to kind of retain nutrients and some digestive issues. So eventually, it was actually a dermatologist who noticed some clubbing in your fingernails, which can be a emblematic of cystic fibrosis. And she suggested getting tested. And then lo and behold, kind of shockingly to everyone, even my pediatrician, it I did have cystic fibrosis and not a genetic mutation, but the actual, you know, double homogeneous mutation that's kind of the most common recessive gene form. So I remember, to your point, my parents sat me down in the kitchen and it was kind of, I I think in their minds, I get now much more dramatic and traumatic than it was to me. And they told me about the diagnosis and that I had this thing and we were going to go to the doctor and learn more, but I was going to start taking pills and, you know, see what happened. And it didn't really register. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was like, okay, that sounds good. We'll figure it out. I think in only a way kind of kids break because you don't realize the gravity, a diagnosis like that. So I just thought, well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, and then, all right. So, I mean, I know you're nine when it, when it happens, but so kind of take us through, you mm-hmm. know, your, your teen years into high school I mean, did, how did having cystic fibrosis affect you or, or, or did it much? Cystic fibrosis for me, you know, it's, it's hard to say because my family makes fun of me that I have a terrible memory. So I don't really have memories from before having CF. It makes it hard to compare. But throughout junior high and high school, I simultaneously had a really great support network of family and friends who, you know, were there to listen and talk about it when I wanted, but also were not pressing me to do so. Because with CF, at least for me, and every patient's really different, but there were bouts when you get certain bacteria kind of stuck in your lungs when you're going to have to receive IV antibiotics and be in and out of the hospital with more frequency. Um, And those are really hard and disruptive times because you would be in the hospital for usually three weeks at a time receiving IV antibiotics. And obviously, as a teenager, that's less than ideal. But luckily, I really love games. So it was always very fun. There were a lot of games whenever I was in the hospital. And, you know, you, you don't really have another reality to compare it to. So... We always tried to make it as fun of a time as it could be, even though, you know, it, you were missing out on other things at school or in high school, um, which, of course, is hard in its own way. Yeah. Well, well, when did you first become cognizant that with cystic fibrosis, it can decrease your life expectancy? I remember right after I was diagnosed, there was conversation with the care team at Children's Hospital in Birmingham, you know, about CF and specifically there was some indication of, you know, you might not be able to get married and have kids. And it never registered to me as a looming certainty, but I think it may, knowing in the back of your head that you're very aware of your own mortality, I think helped me be more excited and maybe have more urgency in seizing opportunities before me, whether it was academic or travel or anything, because I think subconsciously, you know, oh, wait, I I am terminal and where other teenagers might have felt more invincible, I felt more aware that I was fragile. (laughs) Yeah. And what I want to talk about, too, is I know, you, you know, you went to college and then you, you studied abroad for a, a semester. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, I mean, that was pretty important thing for you to do. So, so tell us about that kind of in, you know, especially given the fact that, you know, what you just said about, you know, kind of your mindset, knowing, you know, you have cystic fibrosis and, and the potential there for a mm-hmm. decreased life expectancy. So in, in that context, kind of tell us about the study in abroad. So for me, from the time since I was in, I have two older brothers, like I mentioned, and they both in college had gotten the opportunity to study abroad. So I talked to my pulmonology team, I mean, back in maybe even junior high, but definitely high school of if it's possible, this is a goal of mine and I want to make it work of trying to stay healthy enough to to be able to go and be abroad for a semester. And with a lot of care and intention in my health care, but also a lot of luck, um, I, I was able to go, like you said, I was in Brussels, Belgium for about five months, my junior year of college. And that summer before I went, I was in the hospital to kind of be in tip top shape and get all the germs killed that we could. Uh, and luckily that semester I was able to stay healthy and do my treatments over there. I Right when I got there, I have a nebulizer that I use for inhaled antibiotics or albuterol. And first day I get to Brussels, I plugged it in and it didn't convert and it blew up. So (laughs) so, so that was kind of traumatic on my first day, but then adjusted and it, it was really awesome. And it was also just an empowering experience to know that it might be a little more inconvenient. I might have to think things through a little more on the front end before going somewhere, but that travel, you know, is very much an option and you can do it. So that was a really monumental trip and opportunity. And at that time though, so you were taking antibiotics on a daily basis? Yeah. So with my CF care, um, I was taking daily like pancreatic enzymes to help you digest food and also some anti-inflammatories. I do a daily lung treatment, not only the inhaled medicine I mentioned, but also it kind of blows up like a life vest and shakes your lungs. And then other antibiotics or medicine, I think I was on two rounds of antibiotics at some point over the time, not the same antibiotic every day. Right. Talk about your parents, about kind of what their mindset was on this trip abroad. (laughs) I mean, they're very different. (laughs) It would depend on which one you asked. But (laughs) overall, my parents were really supportive. My initial place I wanted to study abroad was, funnily enough, because I actually just went there on my honeymoon, but I wanted to do my semester abroad in India originally. And my parents were not as supportive of that idea. (laughs) So I think they saw me going to Europe for a semester as much more manageable and, you know, safer as far as the air pollution. But they were really supportive and have always been really supportive of not being defined by a sickness and not being scared that, you know, everything carries a level of risk. And you never know when you might get a lung infection or be sick. And they encouraged me to just go for it and we'll figure out what happens as it comes. I appreciate more now. I have two nephews that it was probably a lot scarier for them than they let on to me. But I just experienced feeling supported by them um, and reassured that, I could do it and we would, we would figure it out. Well, and and at some point does some new drug come out, some experimental drug that you get on that, that helps? That's exactly right. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, care for cystic fibrosis has changed so much and there's been so much incredible research and just development in the way we treat CF. So, 
when I graduated college in my first year of law school, a new drug or combi came out, which treats patients like me that have the most common form of CF. And basically, it tricks your body into not making thick, sticky mucus. I'm not a science major, so I'm not sure on how, but, <laughs> but that's what I understand. And then its predecessor, which came out a couple years later and was even more effective and able to be taken by more people because it had less side effects, Trikafta, um, these drugs and then others that are similar have been really amazing for me and for a lot of my CF patient friends in making it even more possible to travel or exercise or do things that were harder before um, just because now our bodies aren't making such thick, sticky mucus. And have you been able to tell a difference? And I assume maybe less less hospitalizations, but but also just on how you feel since being on these drugs. Definitely, I have felt a huge difference, particularly when I'm running or exercising. That there's, you know, before there might have been more thick, sticky mucus that I could feel in my chest or try to cough up, and now it's really not there. Um, just because I think these drugs really, really do their job. And it's incredible. It impacts my patient friends. It impacts, you know, people who had some fertility issues before. And now because they're not having thick, sticky mucus, you know, they're not having those same issues or digestive and and kind of all the CF realms, no matter how your case manifests. By and large, it's been a really effective and life-changing treatment. So you, I mean, you've really not missed a beat. I mean, you know, college, studying abroad, finishing law school, now you're a lawyer. But let me ask you this. Did it ever cross your mind? And where, like, you know, going into law school, because I know, you know, I'm a lawyer too. I've law school three years. It's not the easiest thing. Did it, <laughs> did it ever cross your mind and say, like, you know, I, I I've got this decreased life expectancy. Why am I going to take three years out of my life to study law? (laughs) Right. You know, it's so funny. Well, it wasn't funny at the time, but it's funny now thinking about your question because I had a history professor at Furman who I wanted to write a letter of recommendation for me. She sent me an email back or read my personal statement. Now I've kind of blocked it out. But basically her response was exactly that of, you know, law schools aren't going to want to admit someone who has such a shortened life expectancy. So if you reveal in your personal statement, you have cystic fibrosis, you know, it's they're not going to want to admit you because it's a lot of money and resources to go to law school. I was really shocked by that because I just, I've always wanted to be a lawyer and I love the law and I was a history major, so I didn't have tons of options. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, you know, I think maybe because CF is genetic and I've known it will always be with me. I, I never viewed that as a reason to not pursue something that I love. Yeah. Well, like you said earlier, I think it, it, for you, it's just been the opposite. There's there's, there's more of a, a sense of urgency to, to do what you want to do. Totally. Well, and let's talk about COVID because that must have been really rough because especially with CF, with issues with your lungs, uh, how did you get through that? It was, it was really hard in 2020, particularly those first, you know, eight months six, eight months when there was just so much unknown and the pulmonologists were really giving us, because they didn't know anything either, pretty limited guidance. Their guidance was kind of stay inside and don't see anyone you don't have to. And I'm very social and work at a firm with a lot of people. So it was hard to be so hunkered down But I think it also really helped because as soon as I kind of emerged in, I guess, January of 2021, 
was when I met my now husband and, you know, was able to come back to work after only working there in person for four months and then being remote for a year. (laughs) So I think to answer your question, COVID was really hard, but in the same way, having times of hospitalization growing up was hard. We and my family really tried to find other fun things about it and put a positive spin on it, even though nothing about the circumstances was ideal or particularly easy. Yeah. Well, and and so what about now, as far as your prognosis going forward? I mean, I still, I guess there's still concerns, of course, but, but kind of, you know, take it from this moment on, you know, what's it looking like? It's looking great. (laughs) (laughs) You know, as with anything, there's very much an element of the unknown, but with what we know and what my lung functions are and the new treatments available, my doctors have indicated there's every reason to think that, you know, it's not going to be CS that ultimately gets me that we'll be able to move from treating CS so much as a, you know, severe chronic illness to more of a manageable illness like an asthma or something where we have fewer checkups and, you know, you take your medicine and use your inhaler and go from there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. Um, And let me ask you this though. I mean, I guess before the experimental or the drugs you're on now came out, I guess there was some some uncertainty or unknown. I mean, how did you how have you kind of dealt with the, the kind of the uncertainty of of life? <laughs> oh man, I mean, I think it's interesting because I've found it easier to deal with the uncertainty in my own life when I'm the patient and I'm thinking about you know, particularly like you said, when there was even more uncertainty around what CF would look like and how it would impact my life. The focus was very much on not dwelling on the uncertainty and just being in the present and, you know, seizing all those opportunities. I think I appreciate more now how it's harder to navigate uncertainty when it's the people we love. I've had two of my family members um, have had cancer in 2020 and 2021. And it's harder when, in some ways, it's harder when you're not the patient and you're just kind of along for the ride of the uncertainty of it all. So I wish I had the answer of how to deal with all uncertainty, but, but I think it's helpful when you realize that uncertainty isn't always bad. Sometimes, you know, even looking at CF as an example, there was a lot of unknown and uncertainty, and it's ended up being this miracle where now there's treatments available and options and things that I didn't even imagine when I was nine. So I think sometimes uncertainties and the unknowns and can work in the positive and end up better than than we even imagined or expected. Yeah, right. And, and and separate and apart from kind of the uncertainties of life. I mean, given what you've been through and how you've you know lived your life, how do you look at life? I mean, I mean like, what do you want out of life? Or we're always told, like in a deposition, I'm, I'm asking three questions in one right now that, that you're not supposed to do. But but so basically, so, so yeah, so, compound so, question yeah, so, here. <laughs> but so, so basically, what what do you what do you want out of life? So I ask you three questions. Pick the one you want to answer. Right. I think for me, the overarching thing is trying to focus on the joy of life not in a cheesy, just, you know, be happy all the time way, because I I don't think that's necessarily helpful. But I think in a more holistic way, that sometimes, even when there's the unknowns and the hard stuff, I still want to be able to find joy in those really hard times. And then, of course, find joy in, you know, the the easy good times too but to me life 
it really is such a gift. And when I think about that when I was nine and just had no idea, you know, what was going to be in store and just my whole life dream was to study abroad one time and then now where we are and it's amazing to think about the opportunities I've had and gotten to travel and do things that um, just seizing joy in the moment no matter what the circumstances are. What have you learned about yourself going through the cystic fibrosis life? I think resilience that we're strong. People are strong and people are resilient. So you think you started the interview asking me what I thought when I was diagnosed with CF and I being nine and not really appreciating perhaps the, the, the circumstances. I, I didn't view it as defining or a mandate. Um, and I felt pretty resilient of, okay, so that's reality. Let's move forward. And I think it's amazing how resilient and strong people are. Yeah. I mean, and everybody has, has bad days and bad, bad times. And, you know, based on, you know, having cystic fibrosis Mm -hmm. and being in the hospital, I'm sure you had some, some, some bad days that, 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 you know, I mean, look at you now, where you are in your life. It's, it's just amazing. (laughs) And I mean, what advice would you give to people that are, you know, just are having a tough time down on their luck, facing adversity? Uh, You know, what advice would you give to them based upon your life? I think first would be to take a minute and accept that it's okay that things are hard. And by being human and being in relationships with people and just living on earth, There's going to be, just like you said, periods of time that are devastating and hard and gut-wrenching, and that's okay. That's all, it's all part of the bag. And I think my advice would be, if possible, to try to lean into community and people that are going to be empathetic and help you, but also remind you that even in darkness, and uncertainty, there can still be joy. Now, Emily, you've done a significant amount of fundraising for CF. Tell us about that. Right after I was diagnosed, I had just read a babysitter's club, like children's chapter book. And in that book, she had had a bike And I am not very sporty and was not very good at biking, but I did swim. So I thought, oh, great. I'll do a swimathon, and we sent out a letter, and people were amazingly supportive and generous. And our original goal was to raise three thousand dollars, and then the event kept growing and growing. We had events with the Alabama and Auburn swim teams, and then did a bunch of other events, wine tastings, and an event at Caladega and all kinds of things. And now we've raised, I think, over $3.3 million. <laughs> so it's been a bit a wild ride for sure. And kind of that whole uncertainty thing, we didn't know if anyone would respond when we sent out the letters at first. And it just kind of took on a whole life of its own. Oh, wow. that they, That's something. Hey, and if somebody now, uh, I mean, I guess... Um, there's still a bunch of research going on. If, if somebody wants to, to donate to, you know, cystic fibrosis, um, as far as, you know, the, the science and, and additional cures or medicine, how could they do that? Yeah, so if you go to lapsforcf.org, you can donate. And we partnered now with Children's of Alabama here, and our focus is kind of twofold. It's on helping families deal with the expense of CF, whether it's trying to pay their power bill or get um, assistance in their co-pays, uh, assist these families dealing with this, you know, sometimes financially devastating illness. Um, and then also, like you mentioned, we support different research 
and have a partnership with CF clinics throughout South America to help assist in care down there, headed up by one of the doctors at UAB who's done amazing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, and I, I want to thank you, of course, for coming on. This has been a, a great show. Um, you know, th- th- it's been a long time coming because we've actually been talking now, I think, for the last two or three months about getting you on. But we've just had a, a, <laughs> something's happened. But, but I definitely want to thank your dad because without your dad, this wouldn't have happened. You know, I was in a mediation in Birmingham that your father was mediating, and he, he had actually done some research on me. And figured saw what you know what I've been through in my life, and then he he said, loves to Google stalk people. Yeah, well <laughs> he did, but I'm glad he did because then he told me all about you, and I said, well, gosh, would she want to come on Rocket Motivation? And I'm like, well, she she might. So so here we are. So I'm finally glad that we, that we've got this done. But what, what I do with all my guests, I give them the parting shot. So so Emily, won't you you know give us something, give us some good, some some great advice that we hadn't already talked about to to take us home. I I should have prepped more on that. I feel like I used all my good advice. Um, I think the best advice I have is, and we already kind of brushed on it, so I don't want to repeat, but I I do think it's good. Uncertainty is really hard, and don't let a diagnosis or a dark period of time define you because you might be able to come out on the other side in a way you never even imagined. And with CF, there was, like I said, there's never a cure. That was never in my mind. And I know there are so many health illnesses and other challenges like that where you're not going to take away the difficult circumstance. But there might still be some unknown surprises and joy in the midst of whatever it is. All right, Emily, that's great stuff. Again, thanks so much for ha- coming on. It's been my pleasure having you on, and um, good luck with everything you do. Thank you so much, and thank you for what you do. This is really, really awesome. What a great episode with Emily Penley. Talk about living a full life, even in the face of living with cystic fibrosis. She has not slowed down at all. Next week's guest is Maddie Niebank. Maddie had a devastating stroke right after she graduated from Georgetown University. She tells her story of rehab and pushing herself to get everything out of life. See you next week. Thanks again for listening to Rocket Motivation. I want to again thank our sponsor, my law firm, Hand Arendal Harris and Self, with offices in Mobile, Birmingham, Fairhope, and Athens, Alabama, and Destin, Panama City, Panama City Beach, and Santa Rosa Beach, Florida. We are uniquely situated among the Southeast major law firms to provide legal direction to clients throughout Alabama and Northwest Florida. So whether you're looking for legal advice, litigators, or simply a partner you can trust, Hand Arendal Harrison Sale is there for you. Thank you for listening and be sure to check out Hand Arendal Harrison Sale for all your legal needs. Visit our website at handfirm.com. And if you would like to get my book, Get Back Up, It's available at Amazon. Just put in Get Back Up and my name, Rod Cade, and the book will pop up. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to Rocket Motivation wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please rate and review the shows and spread the word about Rocket Motivation to your friends. So until next time, remember, never give up and always get back up.